Films in Focus with David Sterrett is underwritten by The Movie House, your destination for first-run Hollywood and independent movies, and a digital portal to the Met Opera, National Theater Live, and special events worldwide in Millerton, New York, and on the web, themoviehouse.net. David Starrett is the editor-in-chief of the Quarterly Review of Film and Video, contributing writer at Cineast, film professor at the Maryland Institute College of Art, Robin Hood Radio's very own critic. He joins us weekly. I've already made him laugh kind of twice. The films are The Dry, Oxygen, and There Is No Evil. Hi, David. Is there only good... I'm I'm okay. I'm 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 now philosophizing on the topic of there is no evil. Well, yes, we will get to that. I must say, uh, you just mentioned laughter a moment ago, and I must say, none of these movies is very big on laughter. But hey, <laughs> I guess we live in we, we live in serious movie times. Um, the Dry is the first of the three films I would like to uh, talk about a bit today, and The Dry is uh, directed by one Robert Connolly, who also wrote the screenplay, which is based on a novel, which a lot of people have read. And The Dry is just the movie of the moment. It is getting such, such favorable reviews. Everybody is loving it. And this is one of those exciting times when I am on the completely opposite side of the scale from everybody. Uh, There are times when I am the only person who is wise enough to realize that a movie is excellent when everybody else thinks it stinks. This is one of those times when I think a movie is quite weak when everybody else is really loving it. So there's a little uh, little warning, everybody. Don't necessarily take me too literally on this. You might love this movie. But I have to say, I just didn't. And it was another case where now that the pandemic is winding down, I went out and I actually saw this in a movie theater. I was alone in the auditorium. So uh, again, I was social dis- socially distanced. Uh, and I had a nice time watching the dry on the big screen. But I can't say that I appreciated it much as a movie. One of the reasons that this film is getting such praise is for the, uh, the leading uh, performance by Eric Bana. And, uh, you know, he's perfectly good. <laughs> Nothing exciting, in my opinion, but, you know, he's perfectly okay. Everything about the movie is perfectly okay. It just didn't click for me. So uh, we have uh, uh, Eric Bana plays a guy who is uh, actually a kind of a policeman. He's kind of a special agent. Uh, And he goes back to his hometown because there has been a double murder and suicide there, or at least that's what it appears to be. Um, A couple of people have been murdered and a family member has apparently committed suicide. And so uh, the Eric Bannock character uh, returns to the small town where he has not been for quite a long while now and he starts to investigate this and it turns out that he knew all the people involved and uh, that they're just involvements that go back a very long time and it all becomes very complicated and I won't say whether or not in the end he cracks the case but you can probably guess. The unusual title of the story, The Dry, comes from the fact that the area of Australia where uh, this is taking place has been in terrible drought conditions for almost a year and this plays an interesting part in the climax of the movie which involves a certain amount of violence Uh, So that's kind of interesting, and we certainly get some quite uh, uh, just sort of fascinating images of of Australia in in this terrible drought condition, and it makes an interesting background or backdrop for this story of passion and murder and violence and so forth and so on. But for me, first of all, it's the kind of... One reason I didn't much like the movie, it's a kind of movie that just doesn't really interest me very much, just generically. It's really a whodunit. Uh, we have our Eric Bana character, and he is investigating and trying to figure out who done it, just what did happen here. Uh, who killed these people really was the person who committed suicide? Was it really a suicide? And all this sort of thing is gradually figured out as the movie proceeds with all sorts of clues and whatnot. So that's just a kind of a movie, again, that is not my favorite kind of film. But more to the point, the characters just struck me as very generic kind of small town mystery movie types. 
Shh. Nobody was surprising. Nobody was very interesting. Certainly nobody was very deep in, in, in any way uh, that captured me. So uh, for The Dry, again, it's a movie that people are really liking, and I think they're liking it largely because of Eric Bana's performance and largely because it has a kind of an interesting atmosphere to it. But it just didn't say much to me, and I would suggest that if this is the kind of movie you like, find a really excellent one that's been around for a while and watch that. I don't think The Dry is a movie that everybody has to see. Again, it's been getting such rave reviews, including from some very bright critics, but um, I cannot share their opinion in this case. Moving to our next film, uh, Oxygen. Oh my gosh, this is interesting. From drought, we now go to total isolation. Uh, Oxygen is among other, it's a science fiction movie, first of all, and it takes place mostly in a, in fact, almost entirely in a cryogenic chamber where somebody has been uh, living under slowed uh, 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 metabolism for a very long time. It's unclear at the beginning of the movie how long a time, but that's where almost this whole movie takes place. And it's it's one of the movies, as my partner pointed out after we watched it, uh, uh, it, it's, it's, it's just one of the many variations on Edgar Allan Poe's classic story, uh, The Premature Burial, from the 19th century. And we've been having variations on this story ever since. And it's the kind of a story where somebody wakes up in this terribly confined space, has been buried alive, or fears that he or she has been buried alive, and uh, then the story proceeds from there. And I'm always interested in this kind of a story, especially in the movies, because how in the world do you create visual variety in a story where throughout the whole thing or most of the whole thing somebody is, is in a box basically and oxygen meets that challenge i think it reach it meets the challenge reasonably well. I should mention right now that it's a French film directed by Alexandre Aja, who specializes in sort of high-intensity suspense stories, uh, and this is very much that. It's not entirely successful, but I think it works pretty well on its own terms, and it certainly manages to go on for an hour and a half or so without losing momentum, even though, again, pretty much the whole thing takes place in a box. So we have our main character, whose name uh, turns out to be uh, Elizabeth Hans. She likes to be called Liz. And, oh, she is not just the main character of the movie, this movie. She is not the only character, but almost the only character. Because we do have the sort of flashbacks and um, uh, 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 scenes which, which take place outside the, the box. Uh, but very, very few. She is really it. It's kind of fascinating that a very important French actor, Mathieu Amalik, uh, appear, uh, appears in another one of the, uh, in a supporting role of the movie. And such a big star, and he, he's hardly even in the movie because it really, the movie belongs to Mel Melanie Laurent, who plays the main character of Liz. So again, uh, she wakes up. Uh, from some sort of a sleep or slumber or, or something, and she's in this box, and she figures out gradually what's been going on. She is in this cryogenic chamber. She has been frozen or, or near frozen. Her metabolism has been, been reduced very, very low, so she has not been conscious, certainly, for a very long time. She's not sure how long. And one thing that she does know, because there's a computer, one of these movie computers that talks in this nice, smooth voice, this is all the legacy of Stanley Kubrick's great film, 2001 A Space Odyssey, back in the 19th 60s, but we have another one of these computers that talks in a nice, soothing voice like this and tells her what she needs to know. And she finds out from the computer that, yes, this is a cryogenic chamber and she's in it. And mainly, most important, most urgent thing, the oxygen level is not very high. This is why the movie is called Oxygen, or originally in French, Oxygen. So what's going to happen here? Is she going to figure out what's going on, why she is in this cryogenic chamber, how she can possibly get out of it before the oxygen runs out, what is going on here, all with help from this computer which talks to her and obeys her commands. It's kind of like a super Siri, you might say, but cannot fulfill all of her directives. For example, if she says, do this, sometimes the computer says, I am not allowed to do that or I am not programmed to do that. Other times, however, the computer is very, very helpful. So that's how the movie goes. And again, it goes on for an hour and a half or so, and I found it, it's, it's mildly suspenseful. It's not edge of your seat suspenseful, but the situation is certainly a dire one. And it's interesting to have this very sympathetic and very vividly acted main character go through this ordeal. This is also what some critics call an ordeal movie uh, for this period of time. And gradually the mystery becomes cleared up, why she's in there, how she might possibly be able to get out just what's going on. And there are quite a number of major 
major surprises along the way. It's so interesting that just within the past few weeks, uh, we had another science fiction movie, uh, which deals with a bunch of people on a spaceship uh, where there is limited oxygen. And in that case, there's a few people on the spaceship. Here, there's only one person on what, well, I admit it, it does turn out to be a spaceship, but we know it's some sort of a, of a special chamber that she's in. Uh, and now it's only one character. And so, again, the, 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 the main actor in this movie, uh, who is Melanie Laurent, really does have her work cut out for her. And I think she ma manages it very well. So Oxygen is a good science fiction movie. It is not a great science fiction movie, but it's good. And again, it's just so interesting to see a movie master this challenge of uh, having just a whole story, and in this case, a whole very sort of in its own emotional way, action-packed story, be sustained mostly by a single actor in a single setting. Uh, interesting movie, Oxygen, and I rather enjoyed it. It's available on Netflix, and I think it's getting a lot of views. Our final film for this week is very different again, and it is an Iranian movie called There Is No Evil. Oh, there's a thought for today, if only that were true. And it's an interesting title for a movie, which is very much about evil in various forms. Again, it's an Iranian movie directed by Mohammad Rasulov. And, you know, Iran is so often painted nowadays as such a demonic force in the world, and there are so many American politicians and pundits who are always warning us about the evils of Iran. Uh, but Iran's film industry has been such a remarkable thing over the past several decades, precisely because there is a lot of censorship in Iranian film, and there is a lot of, of, of restriction on what filmmakers are, have been allowed to do. Uh, filmmakers have had to be very clever in how they can express themselves and deal with major themes and major ideas in their movies without running afoul of government censorship. For example, for a very long time in the later part of the 20th century, Iranian films centered very often on children. And they matched to the most fascinating and, and, and philosophically and psychologically deep work focusing largely on children, which again was a way of getting around the censors. Nowadays, uh, we find that some Iranian filmmakers are not able to, to be quite clever enough to completely get around uh, censorship. Uh, and what happened in the case of today's filmmaker, Rasulov, uh, is that a number of years ago, he directed a couple of movies that the government really didn't like. And a few years ago, they put a major kibosh on him. And the Iranian government said to this Iranian filmmaker, you are not allowed to make movies anymore. You are banned from the filmmaking industry. So what did Rasulov did? He made There Is No Evil, which is a four, excuse me, a two and a half hour movie. And one way in which he was able to do this was the government apparently pays the most attention to movie makers who are making feature films that may go out into the movie screens of the world. So Rasulov constructed There Is No Evil as a series of four short films unified by nothing but theme, but by making what are basically four separate shorts combined into one two and a half hour feature, he was able to get away from some of the government scrutiny that otherwise probably would have stopped him in his tracks. In any case, he managed to complete the movie. It is now available pretty widely, certainly in the United States, and it deals with a really, really important theme, and you can see why it would be so controversial. It deals with capital punishment. Now, for me, capital punishment is one of the major moral and political themes of our time, and I'm always fascinated with movies that deal with it in an intelligent way, and There Is No Evil certainly does that. Each of the four stories deals in a very different way with issues of capital punishment, focusing mostly on a particular fact of Iranian life, which is that a lot of, uh, of, of, the, of the, the death penalties uh, carried out, the executions carried out in Iran, are apparently done by members of the military who have no choice about this. They are simply told, this is going to be your job today. You're going to push the stool up from under this person who has a, uh, a noose around his neck. You're going to do something like that. So you have this interesting case of people who are not in this as a profession for the most part. It's not what they've chosen to do, but it's what they've been conscripted to do. It's what they're being instructed to do. It's what they're being forced to do. And they have very, very different feelings about this. And some of the stories deal with people who are now being ordered to carry out a capital punishment, about which that person may have extremely uh, difficult feelings, or somebody who has already done so and is living with feelings of guilt and conflicted emotions about having done so. So even though there was really no choice in the matter. So There Is No Evil is a fascinating project, 
and it deals with a fascinating theme. And it was made in a fascinating way, being shot on the sly without the government finding out about it until it was all finished and the movie is now out in the world. Unfortunately, I think There Is No Evil is not a very good movie. Each one of the four stories is disappointing, anticlimactic, over-obvious, not acted very convincingly, that sort of problem. So again, it deals with such a fascinating and I think really hyper, super important theme, but just doesn't deal with it very effectively. Some critics are loving There Is No Evil a lot and saying it's a brilliant movie and a brilliant philosophical exploration of this important issue. I think they're giving it extra credit because of the difficult circumstances under which it was made and because of the extra importance of the topic involved. I have to say, I hope everybody sees There Is No Evil. I hope everybody thinks about the issues that it raises and thinks about the enormous enormous courage shown by Mohammad Rasulov in making this movie under such harsh government strictures in Iran, but I only wish it were a better movie. So that is my slightly disappointed story this week, Jill. For which we thank you as ever and always, David Sterrett. The films, The Dry, Oxygen, There Is No Evil. 